Hey there, welcome to Farmcraft. We are gonna try a one-of-a-kind vase here. So let me show you how I made this mold real quick. So it looks a little dirty with the wax on it, but it's pretty smooth. I think that's gonna keep it from looking so much like a 3D print. I realized I, I need a pour basin. I need to be able to build my ceramic up above the bottom of the vessel. Otherwise, I'm going to have a, I'm only going to be able to fill it right to this level, and then the metal's going to shrink, and it's, it's just not going to work. So this gives me like a riser of molten metal that can feed the mold as the metal's cooling. So I was having some problems because it's a enclosed space in there. It wasn't wanting to dry out nearly as fast as the outside. I rigged up my air compressor here and it is slowly blowing some air in there to get the inside to dry out. All right, so we're gonna let those dry. And that is the last coat. Sweet, that looks really good. And then we are going to cast it with the technique that I was experimenting with in a previous video where I mix molten zinc and copper and the two combine together to make brass with a random pattern in the casting. Makes a nice result. First, we need to melt some copper. I had a problem with the kiln I was melting the zinc in, so I had to come up with another method. Enter the Harbor Freight Weed Torch. Just because it didn't explode the first time I tried this doesn't mean it won't on the second. So I'm wearing my favorite suit again. How do I look?
but it's in there. I don't know what kind of look we're gonna get, but we're gonna find out. That yellow is the zinc oxide. That is what the vapors form when they then recondense. More correctly, I should say, that's what the vapors form when there's copper present. When it's just zinc, you just get this white. And zinc oxide is actually what's in sunscreen. It's not toxic, but when it's in a vapor form, you don't wanna breathe it. It'll give you what's called metal fume fever, which is not a dangerous thing, but it gives you a flu-like illness that uh, makes you miserable and you don't want. But I'm out here in the open air, so we're all good. It's cool, this piece right here, you can definitely tell is an alloy. Uh, it looks like a very light colored brass, probably a very high zinc percent. Well, we have some issues. Pretty significant cracks in there. It's interesting. It's actually very much what I was envisioning as far as the silver to brass to copper. I don't see a lot of just straight copper, but it's there. It's very interesting, but it's very cracked. Close, but no cigar. I may try to do some repair on it. Let me know what you guys think. Even though the solder flowed into the joint, it still didn't stick. I was hoping that would solder really easily, but nope. Plan B.
Ah, so now what? You know, this gives me a lot of respect for artists when they see something like this and they know what to do with it. <laughs> I feel like I am uh, uh, just totally making this up. Like Jimmy Duresta, you guys like him? He'd know what to do with this. Since I had to epoxy it and there's epoxy on the surface, there's even like some epoxy fingerprints from me. I really need to sand this. Plus, you know, the raw casting doesn't look that good. I think it could look better and I'm hoping like the silver will take on more shine. Think it'll be watertight? If it's not yet, we can get it there. Obviously, I'm going to cut this off at some point, but for right now, this is actually pretty useful for holding it. I don't know. Hope I don't screw this up. Too hard. So why did this thing crack so much? Since I didn't control the alloy, there's gonna be areas in the vase that don't have a good mixture of copper and zinc and obviously make a weaker, more brittle alloy. So there's weak spots in the, in the metal. Well, the way I made this mold, it had ceramic on the inside and that ceramic is pretty tough. So when this was molten and tried to shrink as it normally would, the ceramic was stronger than the weaker parts of the metal and it cracked where it could to accommodate that shrinking. This technique obviously has very limited uses because if you try to pour it on a big solid area like this bottom was, 
it's going to stay molten a long time and it's just going to become a homogeneous alloy. I mean, you can see there's no, there's nothing interesting there. That's because they pretty much completely mixed. In here where the, the walls were thinner and the mold was sucking the heat out much faster, it was able to solidify before it had a full mixing of the metals uh, to give you this, this variation. Wonder if this thing will hold water. Well, the bottom half doesn't leak. Yeah, I'm filled up to about there. <laughs> All the way full. It doesn't leak. I thought for sure it was gonna leak. These are wooden roses. I actually made these in the first video I ever uploaded to YouTube. I'll leave a link if you're interested. You know what would be more fitting in there? A copper rose. I'll leave a link to making this too. Uh, even the cracks are interesting to look at. It looks like a river on a map or something. There's a lot of variability. It looks like topography on the edges. You can see areas of, of more copper and then lighter yellow brass. Even mixed in with the zinc, there's some coppery areas. There's a nice spot of copper and there's copper mixed in there. Don't know if that's coming across on the camera. There's a coppery spot. I like that it's raw casting inside. You can still see the original casting there. Yeah, even this chip out of the top, it just kind of makes it look like an artifact or something. For channels that have a lot of variety like I do, I think the YouTube algorithm gets confused because I put out things that are so different. Different viewers may like or not like what I'm putting out in my videos, so it confuses the algorithm on whether the people want to watch my videos or not. If I put out a, a video or two and you guys don't click on it, YouTube's going to stop putting them in front of you. That's just the way the algorithm works. Uh, the way around that is to click the bell. That way you can just get notified whenever I put out a video and you can check it out and see if it's something that you want to watch or not. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, that was a really fun build. I am definitely going to come back to casting. I have uh, actually another idea that I think is going to make something uh, even cooler than this. We'll be doing that soon, uh, but I've been working on another project that I'm going to show you next week. So we are going to head in a different direction. Look out for that video. It's going to be a good one. So I hope you guys enjoyed. We'll see you on the next one.